guess what? What? It's our hundredth episode. No way. Woo! So is that why we're all that's here? why we're all here. That's why we have champagne. Yeah. Cheers to a hundred. Cheers. And but basically, cheer. I can't get over there. No. No shaky, shaky. We passed it around, but. Um, but honestly, thank you to all the viewers, um, your comments, you guys reach out. Everybody's always so positive and helpful. And even the comments that some people leave other patients will, or other caregivers, whomever it may be, um, uh, respond. And it's just an amazing community that I think has been started. I mean, Parkinson's community is amazing to begin with, yeah. but, um, I think, you know, what we're trying to do as a whole is just bringing things to the forefront that like we don't know about so we're asking the questions right. um so with that i thought we could have a little bit of fun today i want to talk about or share um videos of our top five most popular so over the past two years we are now at 100 episodes like actual episodes not just me going rogue because we have a lot more videos then <laughs> um and then I want to hear from you guys what was your either favorite or what you learned what you learned the most from um, and then we'll share those clips with everybody so that we can you know we have a lot of great information and the stuff doesn't get old no I no mean, never welcome to the secret life of Parkinson's a podcast created by people living with Parkinson's to help break the stigma of a disease no one likes to talk about now here are your hosts Jessica Krauser and Brian Baker Hopefully it does one day if there's a cure, um, but for now it doesn't. No. So, actually, I don't. I don't even know if you guys know. Do you know what our top, our number one most popular viewed? I do. Do you? I think well, I know. I think I know the as laser, well. Laser light. The laser, because that was always in the top. Simbix. Yeah. So that is our number one. Um, it's episode number thirty-two when we talk to the CEO, mm. um, and so yeah, let's just, actually let's just take a look. If you take a laser, okay, a little bit oh. of propaganda marketing here. If you take the Simbix laser and you turn it on, uh -huh. okay, you cannot see any light because okay. it's infrared. But if you looked through an infrared lens, you could see two beams coming out. Mm -hmm. So that's a really safe wavelength. You cannot see it. You cannot hurt yourself. You cannot damage your eye. You don't need protective glasses. If you shine that on your skin, that has a beneficial health effect on all of our cells in the body. Okay, our second our second um, episode that gained popularity um, fairly quickly, because this is episode number 54, is the MRI guided focused ultrasound. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I'm like, I'm, I, 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 I'm starting to see, a, well, this is a little bit of a trend of like light laser therapy. Mm -hmm. It's non-invasive, high focused ultrasound. Well, that is, it's not invasive, it's not but invasive, it could be. But it, yeah. Compared to drilling. Right. Right. Um, so while I know the DBS episodes have been Those are my educational, favorite. of course that's your favorite because you're on there a lot. Um, <laughs> but as those ones are educational, these ones, you know, people are looking for non-invasive. Mm -hmm. So um, let's just take a quick look at the um, MRI guided focused ultrasound to see what we learned. I know somebody um, that um, I used to box with, he's in Ohio, um, uh -huh. and he had just I think the one side done. And I, I wanna say he was he was actually like in a wheelchair for, and he's, he's young, he was only in his 50s or 60s, but I think Whoa. he was so, it was so hard for him to walk um, that he was either using a walker or in a wheelchair yeah. and he had focused ultrasound done and it was, he like walked out that day. It was like a miracle. Wow, and man. I believe he said now, he did a couple years later, he did get DBS, so, can yeah, you have yeah. focused ultrasound and then do DBS? Yes, but, but you, you can't do it the other way. Right, you so you can't, do. so you're screwed. You can't. <laughs> um, guess what came in at number three? Number three. Probably number three. I have no idea. Our first episode. Uh, oh, really? Yes, which I, I look at and I cringe, cringe. <laughs> because right. I'm like, come. hi. This is Jessica and Brian. Like I'm like reading off of a script, and because but I, we were trying to act natural and it whatever. didn't work. It worked towards like the middle. But well, like the I think you were looking towards him as you were making statements to the camera. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. 
I did that a lot in the beginning. We all got better with yeah, time. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So I'm very far. <laughs> Steve does a good job making us all look good. Yes, I try. He makes yeah. everybody look every good. So hour, this guy spends hours and hours and hours editing. editing. That, that too. Is true. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for that and all you do. My pleasure. But let's see how you could have maybe edited episode one a little bit better to make mm. us look. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but let's take a look at episode one and see what we were. See what how you were moving a lot. Oh. Just kiddos. tiny little yeah. babies. I was 40. Oh, shush. No, no I was 39. <laughs> mm. Even better. <laughs> um, okay, so let's take a look at episode one. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our very first podcast, We Have Parkinson's. I'm your host, Jessica Krauser, and I'm here with my co-host, Brian Baker. Hello. Hello. Uh, I want to welcome anyone who is tuning in. Parkinson's patients, caregivers, family members, doctors, pharma and medical companies, and everyone in between to hear and learn more about what it's like to live with PD. So our number top four um, came in with um, Samantha. Oh, our first young onset. Young onset. Our, young, our yeah. first young onset. Well, I mean, aside from us, but our first young onset interview. That was pretty um, early on, too. Yeah, but she and she's the one that introduced us to the book, Shaky Hands. Ah, mm. uh, yeah. right. And so that's episode number 12. Number 12. Yeah. That's a long time. I know, ago. right? Yeah. Um, but her hers gets a lot of views. Um, and, you know, we actually need to reach out to her. She does a lot with the Parkinson's she Foundation. Does, yeah. she's she's, been doing, I think she's on the board now. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, you know what? We should do like a, you know, second year, like, follow yeah. up. Yeah. And we can tell her then how she's how she helped us because you know yes, we have the exactly shaking hands right. book in the kit yeah. mm -hmm. and you know she's she has like almost 10,000 views on Go this Sam. podcast so let's take a look at uh at a clip from samantha's episode number 12. i was gonna say like even just like doing this podcast that's why we want to do it is just to break things down and make it easy so that we we know like again, I thought I was going to be in a wheelchair too. It's like it's not going to happen tomorrow. It might not even happen when we're eighty. I yeah, mean, half the people in our workout class are eighty, and they're not in wheelchairs. But it's like, how do you explain it? Bringing awareness that you can live with part, you can live well with Parkinson's if you take care of yourself. Yeah. Um, yes, there could be things that happen or or get worse for others, but um, there's things that you can control. <laughs> Last but not least. <laughs> Number five out of a hundred. It's Melissa Carlson. Yes. Shocking. So many squats or what? No, I wish I wish that one was it. That was my favorite title. Mm, why so many why squats? So many squats, Jesse. <laughs> Episode number thirty-five. Why strength training is critical for Parkinson's mm. patients. Well, let's take a look to see what we to see what you shared with us. It's common for people with Parkinson's to feel weak and your legs, your extremities, you know, some, mm -hmm. I've heard, if I've heard it once, I've heard it a million times. I feel like there's concrete in my legs. My feet feel like there's, there's cement blocks. So um, that strength training helps build those muscles so you don't have that constant feeling of lead <laughs> in your legs or arms, extremities. Um, it also helps with uh, muscle and bone mass. So stronger muscles equals stronger bones. People with Parkinson's, you know, unfortunately have a higher risk of falling. So if you have stronger muscles, then you will be able to withstand a fall. You won't, hopefully, if we're not going to fall, but in the event that we do, mm -hmm. um, you will be able to withstand that a little bit better than someone that doesn't strength train. You did well. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. You're good on camera. <laughs> really, though? Yeah. Um, amazing, isn't it? So let's start with you. I want to talk about, there's things that, uh, somebody asked me the other day, like, you know, what, what are you getting out of the podcast? Because it's like, you know, we, st we started this to help other people, but we're also helping ourselves. Like for oh, one, yeah. it's like, it's true like therapy for me. So I don't have to lay on all the emotional or issues with, you know, to my husband and kids or family members all the time. I, I just do it here. <laughs> um, the microphone. But I'm learning so much, mm -hmm. like, yeah. from who we have on. And then people, you know, which is great. Our viewers keep sharing, like, did you check this out? Have you looked into this? And it's like, no, I haven't. But because everyone's like, aren't you ever 
I know, how do you come up with content? I'm like, because people keep asking questions. Yeah, the responses have been yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So what are what's your top, you just talk about it and I'll find the episode for you, but what's, what is your favorite? <clears throat> so the one that I found very informative for myself is one where Steve turned off his DBS and did his little party trick. His party, party trick. trick. Because I was getting ready to go through DBS stuff or considering at that time. And for me personally, I was like, okay, this really works. Mm. All so right. that so that there's that one. Mm-hmm. At that was episode number sixteen. No. So let's just take a look real quick at a quick clip of Steve turning off his DBS. You so want to see it? Let's show everybody your party trick. And if you're just listening, I'll tell you what's happening. Okay, so the system that I have allows me to change stimulation programs, do a lot of different things, but it also has an off button. And I'm going to turn it off right now. So this is your remote control to your DBS system, right. which controls so your tremors. It's going to stop all stimulation. Okay. All right, I'm going to turn it off. So for those of you who can't see, if you're listening in only, Steve is now shaking uncontrollably. And it's almost to the point where he's going to drop this remote, can, and hopefully he'll get back to being able to turn it back on. And then we're going to talk about how this all works. Ready? Did you get it? It's getting there. Okay. Okay. Voila. Party trick. It is an amazing party trick. Yes. Amazing. I know. And you're you're still you're still doing great. I think it was sitting in the same chair. I think you were too. Oh yeah. How does that make you feel when you see that? Uh, it's been a long time, but it feels really good because I'm getting still getting good control okay. yeah so there's that one and then i also from the hr perspective and legal perspective i enjoyed jim allen's uh that was a good yeah that, that was, was really good informative yeah. yeah that's episode number 60 it's empl- employment advice when living with parkinson well, let's take a look at what jim had to say because there was some really good insights that if you haven't seen that episode that we'd like to share real quick because these are specific things that affect you, you should walk in with a list. Mm -hmm. I have this condition and these are the troubles that I'm having that I need to have accommodated. Now the employer gets to pick what to do because it's the employer's business. They get to choose how they want the business to run. Mm -hmm. You tell them what the difficulty is and their obligation under the law is to help you fix it. I think I think one of the biggest things for myself is we've tried to make this not about us, but about the disease and educate ourselves and other people as we go along. Even though people run up to the both of you when we go to meetings <laughs> and nobody, they just walk, in fact, they trip they just, over us. Right. They but just, they, ask how they ask how you're doing. <laughs> they ask how, as they're yeah. on you. <laughs> I was going to say that when you said, like, it's not about us, I'm like, but sometimes it is. I complain, <laughs> I complain a lot. But again, I'm hoping it's for the greater good. Of yeah, I mean, I mean, like, yeah, we tell our stories and we yeah. share our stuff. So from that perspective, it is about us. But the big picture is, yeah. is that we try to focus more on the, the disease itself. Yep. Well, it's an important mission. Yeah. You know? So what do you have as your top? Uh, number 85, psychosis. Oh, is that my friend? Yeah, yeah. Leah. Leah. Being, yeah, I think the good. incredible thing that I got out of that is somebody oh, is seeing something that they're they're really not, <laughs> but they're really convinced that it's real, mm-hmm. you know. And they, in turn, convince their family members that it's real. Mm-hmm. And a few people at the gym actually commented on that one to say, um, I'm glad that you, you you got somebody like that to share that information because – now I have a watch out. Like, I never would have thought of that. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at, at, at that one with Leah on Parkinson's psychosis. I think looking backwards, if my dad maybe was more in tune to what Parkinson's was or is, I mean, that seems mm. funny to say. No, like, I know he what you mean. He was diagnosed with Parkinson's. He didn't know much about Parkinson's, and he really let my mom handle everything and i think had he understood more about parkinson's and um gone to maybe some support groups 
he would have been able to better alert us kids who only yeah. see her, you know, I wish I saw her more than I do, but in spurts where again, I'm not trying to look for changes yeah. or try to say, you know, boy, you seem different than the last month when I saw you. Um, I think maybe we could have caught things ahead of time or if, if the neurologist and the PCP were working together, um, perhaps that would have helped. But or, having two doctors in different yeah. hospital systems and different cities, there there was no cohesive care team, including family. Yeah. So what, do you have another one? Yes, Cheryl Cougar hallucinations. Yes. But correct me if I'm wrong, hers was more, hers is driven by medication, yes. whereas... Leah's mom was driven by the disease. That's correct. Yeah, so that's yeah. a good that's a good clarification. But let's take a look at Cheryl Kruger when she talked about her hallucination situations. Uh, on medicine I'm on right now, um, I am getting um, hallucinogens. Oh yeah. And so and uh, and it seems like they're. They're, they're playful. It's like a lady in the kitchen who's cooking all the time. I was gonna say. So I've never. Um, so this is probably not disease related, but the medication related hallucinations. Yes. hallucinations. Yeah. Do you know that it's fake, or do you think it's real? Like, well, it depends. Some are you can tell they're fake, uh -huh. but um, but it is so scary because it's um, because it looks so real. Yeah, it's like when you're when um, but the, a lot of them will have hoodies on with their face mask, or they don't want to be seen. Hmm. But the, and. Um, and they they appear and disappear, you know, without movement. Or I mean, without um, driving a car out or anything. They just kind yeah. of walk in through your door and walk through back out. And it's all that that and that's all a dream. And um, so is it so what, scary? Like I mean, I would that would yeah. Well, it's scary when your when I when my parents are deceased, mm -hmm. and when they came back, uh, uh, saw an image of that. That mm -hmm. just that that was that was hard. Do you have any other ones? Yeah, but I don't want to hog everything. Right. How many more <laughs> That's what you do. <laughs> uh, just two. Okay. The do's and don'ts of surgery with the gene. That's episode number 72. Yeah, so that was an eye-opener. Let's take a look at, at what Gene and his daughter had to say about that. I, I can see, and I will say this too for caretakers, make sure you have access to their MyChart. So we got on his phone and like hacked in and you know luckily like his ipad or whatever it is like make sure you have his, their password information mm -hmm. their login information so that when if he's unable to you know access it himself or he or she that you are able to do that so that we could see the schedule of his medications mm -hmm. throughout the day we could see that you know you're giving it at 6 a.m why are you giving him levodopa at 6 a.m and then four hours later giving it again and then, like you said, Brian, two o'clock, and then we're not getting it until the next day. That's not how that works. And so it was a lot of kind nudges, and then it became like, you're not <laughs> doing this right. And, you know, kind of snippy conversations where, and you, and I would say to, you know, the nurses, because she's the one that puts the order in, he or she, the doctor, we asked her to delay it um, because, they pay attention to her time. Mm -hmm. You can kind of like form a relationship and finagle it a little bit like, okay, we'll wait an hour. Um, we'll wait too. But just making sure, you know, you do your best to argue that fact that this timing is really important. Do you have another one? One last one, caregiver tips. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that Which one is, what is that? 33. Ruth. 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 Yeah. yeah. 23. 23. 23 we need to have another caregiver one yes, on. Yes, agreed. Actually, yeah, let's take a look to see some of the things that she had as tips. And I think, again, long-term friends knew something was mm -hmm. going on. Um, mm -hmm. It's very hard to hide. Yeah. And he still doesn't have a lot of the physical symptoms. Mm -hmm. It's more, uh, he does have a few, but most of it is the emotional, mm -hmm. psychological, cognitive issues. And those are hard to hide. And there's, those are hard to, one, diagnose and get certain medications for. Not, mm. not that it's hard to get medications for, but there's, 
not always a medication for certain things, or right? it's just like other medications you start taking this and then it reacts with this and mm -hmm. then it's too much of that and it's too you know so yeah. the tweaking of it is is really important and sort of an ongoing so if you had to give any advice to a caregiver a new caregiver what is something that you wish you knew or that you could tell somebody um, I hesitate to say educate yourself because there's so much stuff out there, you know, on the internet. But go to the sites that the you know Michael J. Fox and the mm -hmm. Parkinson's Foundation, mm -hmm. and get information. Ask your doctor for information. Go with your partner to the appointments mm -hmm. and be a um, backup because I know at least for all of us I think we go to the doctor and they say how are you and you go fine <laughs> but <laughs> you know so I always feel like I, I don't say anything at the doctors until there's something that he's missing all right next up Melissa do you have a favorite I don't have a specific favorite, but what I do have, I like the sciencey ones, the ones that are okay. like when Dr. Patel is here. Um, I always learn something from those. Um, I think he, okay. he just has a way of like putting it at a level where everybody can understand. Mm -hmm. um, we've learned a ton. Um, yeah, he's a wealth of information. Yeah, yeah, from the from the get go. Yeah, um, it's great to be supported by. Yeah, we are so fortunate. To have you know, that. because like we've said this multiple times, like none of us are getting paid here. We don't pay our guests. We don't. No, yeah. Yeah. they don't pay us. We yeah. don't pay them. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. but but to be for him to take the amount of time he does, yeah. is and he will yeah. drop things and come and help us out yeah. um, many times. But yeah, I like all the sciencey ones. Um, but so we don't. I, I'm not going to show a certain clip just because there's there's, there's um, well, 14. But so if you are, if you do watch us on YouTube, or, but if you're listening to us on other forms like Spotify or Apple, um, it's not set up this way. But on YouTube, we do have a playlist. And so if you want to check out all the physician type ones, it's called Talking with the Experts. Mm. So there's 14 episodes that you can look at specifically for that. Awesome. 14. Wow. Right? It's a lot. Yeah. And then I think the other one I really, really enjoyed was Martha's. Yeah. I mean, when she said... When she dropped that, she w went through poop for, you know, however long. <laughs> I was like, you are amazing. Actually, can we cut, cut to that poop segment? Because that was actually really funny. Yeah. Okay, so you went, and in 2014, that's when you switched your career. And then you it led you down a path to start a company, and you started making probiotics. Well, so how'd you get there? First I, first I started collecting poop. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, because I knew the answers were in the microbiome yeah. and I founded the bio collective with Dr. Jack Gilbert from the University of Chicago who was one of the stars of the microbiome field and Dr. Suzanne Vernon who had been studying chronic fatigue um, at the CDC for about 17 mm. years and we saw these commonalities in the gut and started talking about how you know we we have disease classifications in this reductionist thinking, but really these are systemic problems. Mm -hmm. One of the big epiphany, epiphanies was uh, the people in our lab who processed the fecal samples could actually tell if a person had Parkinson's without any other information by looking at the stool that they were processing. Really? Because people with Parkinson's had sections of their stool that were the consistency of concrete indicating a severe water homeostasis problem. So the other thing too with Martha is I, we've gotten a lot of really good feedback on that and I've, I've sent it over to her so she knows like, you know, what people are saying and stuff. But, you know, so many people said they're like, I'm trying that the probiotics yeah. i'm still on it I'm, i bought some and tried i know a lot of people at the gym but yeah, even like so even like my sister oh, she's trying really? it my mother-in-law wants to try it like oh. my um like so people out because it's good for everybody mm -hmm. it's just well and it's just from her it's coming from such a good place right absolutely uh, you know that i think that was more what i got out of that one was you know when you know what you're getting with her too, you know, yeah. like she's so smart, so well, smart. It must, it must be working because I belched <laughs> for the first time in like 25 years. I belched, <laughs> and I went, I ran and got Judy. And said, "Did you hear that? <laughs> did you hear, did you hear that? that? I, I just finally belched. did it. I finally did it." 
Oh my God. Come you to my house. Come that <laughs> happens all the time. That's awesome. <laughs> um, did you have any other ones or that, that was your, that was pretty much. Yeah. Can I go? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So tell us what yours are. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. The one that we do the last 30. Se- oh, yeah, that's all. So my favorite, one of my favorites is, uh, with Dr. Patel. And when I, when we learned about the drug to disease interaction, that was big. Yes. Yeah. That was eye opening for me. Um, and I've actually still been working on it since then. Hmm. Um, working with my company on it because again, I'm in, in, in pharma and I'm like, there's got to be a solve for this. And so I'm actively going down that avenue because going to a hospital and one, not getting your meds on the, at the right times because nurse staff or whomever doesn't know that how critical Parkinson's patients have to get the right meds at the right time. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, potentially getting administered a drug that's going to interact with your yeah. disease. Scary. It's scary. Like, yeah. and how is that not fixed? It would seem so simple, mm-hmm. you know. Well, and I, so that's again. That's a, the, I'll hopefully be able to come on, maybe at the end of this year to say we fixed it. But I don't know. That'd that's be that's very yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's awesome. I don't remember what episode that was. Vital knowledge for every patient. Episode number sixty-three. So let's, let's take, take a look. look. Yeah. You were wanting to say that so yeah, bad. <laughs> the most important things, especially when you are in the hospital, is, hey, I get my medications at this time, mm-hmm. the, these times during the day. I need that to happen, which... <laughs> Never does. I mean, does I've not been, happen in the I've hospital. I've been in the hospital because, twice. Right, because right. nurses, they have... I mean, they're on their schedule, rightly mm-hmm. so, and they have their times when they give out meds, which most of the time does not correlate with when a Parkinson patient needs their meds. And but again, is this, is it, is it, oh, time to take my meds. <laughs> um, is it different for different disease groups or is it all handled the same? So like, let's say uh, I'm diabetic or I have heart disease and, you know, I'm in the hospital and I get, I have to get medications at certain times. Is it still the, on the nurse's time frame? Yeah. Okay. But I just didn't know if we were getting slides. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I mean, it's not, but however, Parkinson's, I think is different in the sense that, you know, Dopamine is is a unique neurochemical in that it does fluctuate in the brain all day long. Parkinson's patients are sensitive to when they get their medications mm. and staying as, as regimented and regulated as possible. And now you're put in the scenario where A, my disease already may, my symptoms may appear worse. B, I'm more prone to potentially being confused or whatnot because of the stress of XYZ. And now I'm not getting my meds like I'm supposed to be getting. Mm-hmm. Right, right? And so I've, I've been in the hospital twice since I've been diagnosed. The one time, to the nurse's credit, she didn't know, but it's like midnight, and she's like, oh, you've only had two doses of your medication, so let's take your third dose. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, I don't, I'm don't. i not taking it at midnight. <laughs> right. Yeah, at this point in time, you just might as well pass up because she's, uh, she's not. Can you just put it in your pocket? Or, I, you know what? I don't tell the hospital, so I just, <laughs> I just take my own medication there and that mm-hmm. way. Because realistically, because by the time they get it from the pharmacy, they get it up to the nurse, they get it to the nurse – you know, right. gets to yeah, you, yeah, then it's almost time for the, the next go round. So I think I'm the only one that's been drinking my, my champagne, but again, cheers to, cheers to another hundred, to another to hundred. hundred. That's right. Yeah. Um, and again, cheers. And thanks to everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. For watching. thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Cause if you subscribe, you'll be able to see all the latest episodes Brian loves to talk about the subscription. Um, (laughs) But in all honesty, we have right now on this date, it's around 5,000 subscribers, but we have over 10,000 views. So half are subscribed, half are not. And the reason why that's important is because it it will increase the likelihood of other people seeing it. It helps with the whole algorithm thing as well. Um, But it will also, you know, hopefully, you know, get us noticed by, you know, either another company or something so that we can start spreading the word even bigger and we're having a a good time you know we're spreading information but this is really a mission i believe for us oh absolutely like i wouldn't i would not i would not have this like i would not change anything Mm. and to think it all started with a little conversation at the gym you guys should do a podcast and then eagle ears here was like a podcast I, i could do that with you 
And it was and only because we are. were bantering back and yeah. forth and you mentioned that. Yeah. Yep. So you were going to start it with just an iPhone. Oh, it's just going to be At our phone. At the gym. <laughs> yeah. And now we have one, two, three, four, five. What? Five cameras. I know. When he when he said, it, like, um, oh, what was it? Like something about like the pod, the, doing a podcast and you had all the stuff. He's like, where did all this stuff come from? It's like, I know. I'm like, I thought we were just going to be on our laptop or our okay. iPhone. So uh, thank you. For, I love surprise. Thank you for yes. helping us elevate and get this information into the hands of everybody who's looking for it. So. That's my yeah. pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, it's worth it. I don't have a 30 seconds. Just keep watching. Uh, keep sharing your information. Um, provide us comments. You can send us emails. It's at info at the secret life of PD.org. Okay. All right. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Yeah.